Okay, so we're going to look at the, um, the inverses of higher order, higher dimension uh, matrices. We did two by twos, you know, three by threes, four by fours. How do we do those type of situations? And this is a summary of that, you know, if it's a two by two, one over the determinant of A, and then switch these two, right? Switch these two and take the opposite of that. If it's greater than um, a two by two, so if the matrix A is n by n, where n is greater than 2, so it's a bigger than a 2 by 2, and it has to be a square matrix, it says use the procedure and block. We want to represent it this way. Matrix A, the coefficient matrix or whatever, matrix A times the identity matrix, we want to use row transformations to change A on the left into the identity matrix, and whatever's left after those operations on the right is our inverse. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, Let's do the inverse of this matrix, okay? So, first things first. It says, you know, write it in this form, where on the left-hand side, I have my A matrix, or whatever matrix I want to find the inverse of. And on the right, I have the identity matrix that corresponds to that size. So this is a three by three. So I'm gonna write my A matrix, one, two, negative one, negative two, zero, one, one, negative one, zero. I'm gonna write my identity matrix on the left, and my, I, I'm sorry, my A matrix on the left, and my identity matrix, which would be a three by three, because this is a three by three, my identity matrix on the right. I'm gonna separate it with a line. Um, then I wanna do row operations to switch it. I wanna get the identity matrix on the left, right? So currently I have A on the right, uh, A on the left, the identity matrix on the right, but I'm gonna do row operations to create the identity matrix on the left. And once I do that, Whatever's left here is my um, inverse. So let's go through our row operations. We want to make um, the identity matrix on the left. So I need zeros under this one. I have a one in the top left-hand corner already. That's awesome. So that's good. Now I need zeros underneath it. So I'm going to do multiple row operations in one shot. I'm going to take um, twice row one and add it to row two. And I'm going to take the opposite of row one and add it to row three. So I'm changing only row two and row three. Row one becomes or is one, two, negative one. 1, 0, 0. Row 2, right? Um, twice row 1. So I'll do my, I'll show my work. So twice row 1. 2, 4, negative 1, 2, 0, 0. Plus row 2, negative 2, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Add the two together. 0, 4, 0, 2, 1, 0. So row 2 becomes that. 0, 4, 0, two, one, zero. Let's find the new row three, the opposite of row one, so negative one, negative two, one, let me move that up. Uh, uh, negative one, zero, zero, and then add into row three. Zero, 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 one, uh, adding them together, zero, negative three, one, negative one, zero, one. This is my new R3. Zero, negative three, one, negative one, zero, one. Okay, so um, double check my numbers. You know, I did twice row one and added it to row two. Four, negative two. Okay, so I see a mistake. Oh, crap. I hate that thing. I see a mistake here. Let me see if you guys recognize it. Always check your work. So I did twice this. I just forgot to multiply this one by two. So that's going to change this guy. I'm going to double check again. Two, four, negative two. Two, zero, zero. Negative two, zero, one, zero, one. Good. Zero, four, negative one, two, one, zero. And then... That looks good. Plus row three, zero, negative three, one, negative one, zero, one. Cool. So I just made that mistake right here. Always check your work. You know what I mean? I always like kind of visually check it as I go and make sure. But when you have a lot of row operations like this and it can get really ugly, make sure that you don't make, oops, make sure that you don't make a mistake. Because, you know, obviously that would suck to go through all this stuff 
and then you have one stupid little mistake. I mean, we've all done that before. I've done it before. Obviously, I almost did that now. So, perfect example of a situation where you want to double check your work. Okay? Always double check your work. All right, um, no, I'm not done. So, but I got zeros here. I'm trying to get the identity matrix here. Um, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to create a one here, right? I, always, I want ones down the diagonals. So, I'm gonna do one fourth times row two. Um, and I'll just do that in this step. One, two, negative one, one, zero, zero. Zero, one, zero, one half. So yeah, it happens that you might see fractions, which is not a good time, but it happens. And um, I'm gonna do it on this, I have space. I want to create, because I'm looking for the identity matrix here, I'm trying to create zeros above and below this one now. So now I'm gonna use row two to get zeros here and here. So to change this to a zero, I'm gonna take negative twice row two and add it to row one so row one changes and three times row two and add it to row three so row three changes I'm going to do that on the side now so negative two times row two so zero negative two zero negative one uh, negative one half <laughs> zero thinking rid of the fractions plus row one one two negative one one zero zero not too bad of a fraction one zero negative one zero negative one half and zero then let's do this one three times row two zero three zero Ugh. three halves three fourths Ugh. zero zero negative three one negative one zero one gotta get good with your fractions zero zero one so this is three halves is um well, you, adding fractions, 3 halves minus 2 halves is 1 half, and then 3 fourths, and then 1. Okay, let's write that out. Row 1 changed to this guy. 1, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1 half, 0. Row 2 is not changing. And row 3 became 0, 0, 1, 1 half, 3 fourths, and 1. Now I'm going to copy and paste this onto the next page because I'm not completely done, but I like what it looks like because I'm almost at the identity matrix on the left. Almost. Almost. Almost there. If you can see, right, I have ones down the diagonal, zeros on the bottom, I just need zeros here, but I only have one more step to make zeros here. If this was not zero, I would use now row three to create zeros in that column. So I use this to create zeros underneath it, this to create zeros in its column, and this to create zeros in its column. And all I have to do is um, row three plus row one to change row one. I'm not, I'm not even gonna do that on the side here. Adding the two, maybe I will just to show you guys. One, zero, negative one. One, zero, negative one, zero, negative one, half, zero. Zero, zero, one, one half, three fourths, the one, that's a three, in case you didn't know. And add the two together. I should have kept it red. <laughs> one, zero, zero, one half. So negative one half plus three fourths, right? This is negative two fourths plus three fourths is one fourth. Okay, I think I have a video on adding fractions if you forgot how to do that. Row one became or becomes one, zero, zero, one half, one fourth, one, zero, one, zero is row two, that one didn't change, one fourth, zero, and row three didn't change, one half, three fourths, one, right? So what did I do? Again, I have A, I want its inverse. I start with putting A here and the identity matrix next to it. I do row operations to the left side of this line to create the identity matrix on the left. Once I create the identity matrix on the left, 
this new matrix here is my inverse. A inverse is equal to 1 half, 1 fourth, 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, 0, 1 half, 3 fourths, and 1. Okay? This is my inverse. So once again, if I have a square matrix that is larger than a 2 by 2, I have obviously a bit more work to do. Right? I start by putting my matrix here and the identity matrix next to it. Move and create by row operations the identity matrix now to, from uh, on the left hand side. Once you create the identity matrix on the left hand side, that new right hand side is your inverse. And that is how you find the inverse of a matrix that is greater than a 2 by 2. So this is my summary of that. Okay, if it's 2 by 2 you have this nice like formula, but if it's bigger than that, then I do this, right? I start with the matrix on the left, identity matrix on the right, do row operations to make the identity matrix on the left, and the new matrix on the right is my inverse.